Welcome. If this video helped you finish your tasks that you were trying to do, be sure to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and then if you feel so inclined to uh, give me a tip on Venmo, buy me a beer or a coffee. Thank you. Okay, so this is actually about a day later, but I'm just now remembering. So here's the introduction to the video. Um, this is my bathroom. Uh, kind of do a little bit of a pan around here, bathtub, toilet, uh, basically roughly where the corner of this is to that other side is going to be where I want to put this new double sink vanity. Now I messed up a little bit when building the home. I actually built a lot of the home myself besides that frame of the barn. We look, I finished out the home. <laughs> so there we go. I'll do a video on that someday. But you can see there is a uh, drain right here. And then roughly below this sink, just a little bit off to that side, is uh, a hookup to drain there. Now, obviously, like I said, se six, 72 inches or so is about here. So I'm gonna have to come up with some creative drain for this sink that's gonna be over here. Um, and then this one here won't be as wacky, but I've gotta come up with some creative stuff. Uh, initially, I really wanted this to be like one sink or, or one cabinet countertop and another cabinet, but I won't be hiding any of the plumbing if it's draining that way. So gotta think of something. Um, but we'll come up with a little bit of something, but basically we're just going to make it out of two by fours, some rough cut cedar, and then the countertop I did buy from Home Depot. It's uh, a lighter color butcher block. So it's very similar to this butcher block that we made here, but it's probably more so this color, but with the rough cut cedar like this, uh, which has a beautiful purple tone, to it, a uh, purple or reddish colored tone to it, and a wonderful, on that last outside inches, that's actually bark right there, but on the last outside inches, it has white, or almost a pine color. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is kind of a lot of our rough material here. Um, I've got a little bit of other material just on the other side over there, and I've got a loud cat under that four-wheeler. Um, <laughs> this is that butcher block. It is a laminate butcher block, which was a lot cheaper. Uh, I'd had to look up the price again. It was around 120 to 150, but it is 76 inches wide, 25 inches deep, which is a little bit of a struggle. 76 inches is going to be, uh, what's his name? Uh, it's going to be yeah, six or eight inches from that toilet, which is fine. Um, 25 inches is actually gonna to be too far out for the door. So I'm going to rip cut three inches and create kind of a backsplash on it. But the first thing I need to do, I need to create a frame that goes under this. And we're gonna do that with some two by fours or two by sixes and just build a nice little frame to go under that. And that's gonna be our starting point. And then I'll pick up the design and stuff like that from there. Okay, so here's my crazy idea. I've got four six foot two by fours. The other one's over there. That's a shorter one. Um, and I am going to do two frames like this. So these are two by sixes. That's just because I have scrap two by sixes. You could do this with two by fours. I'm going to do these. They're six foot. I may even need to shave those down a little bit. This. So yeah, I'm going to cut off five inches of each of these six foot two by fours. Uh, that'll take into account the three inches for each of the two by sixes on the end and the potential two inches of this rough cut cedar. As you can see, like that piece right there is probably one inch true. That one's three quarter. They're rough cut. So we're gonna cut five inches off of each of those. Okay, 
okay? So these are now 67 inches. We've cut five inches off of six foot, foot boards. So it'll look roughly like this right here. So this is going to, the countertop will be on the other side of that. Okay, we'll spare you all the video before this, but I've changed my mind. Um, one, the sinks that I have are about 18, 18 and a half inches wide. So laying these boards flat would not work well, but uh, that, that, that helps out in another way. Um, we'll be able to shoot screws in. I'll be able to use a two by four flat like that in the middle of it, which will work almost as well. Um, so yeah, the long boards are 57 inches. These are 22 and a half inches. 22 would probably work fine. Finally looked over my uh, cardboard box here, which is the top on it, and it's 74 by 24. And if I go to my old vanity that I got from somebody else, it's 22 inches deep. And you can see there's only about two inches on each side of that. So I'd like a little bit more room on those two sinks that I've got there. Uh, so we'll get it figured out. But we're gonna shoot screws in this for the top and we'll show you how I'm putting that together. Okay, so final explanation. <laughs> We've got 67 inch two by fours on the long ends. We've got 22 and a half inch two by sixes. We only use two by sixes because we had the scrap for them. Uh, we just cut to fit some two by fours in the middle and on the edge. What those are going to be for is to pocket hole some screws into that big topper or that uh, countertop over there. That's like the cheater's way of doing it. And we're just gonna snug them up there. But yep, that's it. So halfway point, edge, that should be plenty. Put six, you know, three screws in each of these two by fours uh, to hold down that countertop. Okay, so here's our top that we're gonna drill our countertop onto. We're looking at the front of it down from here. Uh, the bottom is the exact same as the top, but there are none of the two by fours screwed into it yet to, uh, cause those are gonna be sunk into our uh, countertop, but we've got our legs. So these are 33 and a half inches. The reason why I'm going with a countertop height of 30, uh, 36 inches, you can see right here, we've got one and a half inch of the two by four and our countertop is gonna be an inch to an inch and a half. So we'll be really close to that 35 and a half or 36 inches in height. What I am doing for the legs sticking out, I'm just gonna do the old trick of, you know, I guess that's seven inches, three and a half inches is a two by four. And we'll go right there and we will shoot screws into this to get the height correct. And we'll just check them on every single one. Then we're gonna put two more two by fours. And we'll show it again when it's all done, but this is just kind of how we're doing it. Two screws in each of the uh, sides. And there's Blue Cat. This high up, I don't really worry about splitting, but on the ends, I have split a few of them with this impact driver. And these are two and a half inch screws, so pretty low likelihood of them shooting through something. Okay, and then I do another one on this side just for the hell of it. Okay. Now to do the same thing for that one and that one. All right, so there's gonna be one sink here, one sink here. I'm hoping 
the the drain pipe doesn't go right there or else I have to move that one. I'm leaving this open for now because my idea is have a little opening where the sinks are and just have a flat spot where I could stack baskets or something like that. So that's enough for tonight. We'll get back to it tomorrow or the next day. Okay, now we're ready. I've measured each end and I've got it like within a 16th of an inch of an overhang on each edge. Uh, this is so, some of this lumber is scrap lumber, so I don't think it's perfectly square corner to corner, but it's good enough for the girls that I run with. So um, anyway, here's what we've got going. Uh, we have a drill bit that is about the size, and our cat is here. Uh, about the size of this two and a half inch screw uh, as far as like gauge diameter wise and I've got it set to just barely shorter than the length of the screw because I don't want this separating and I don't want this digging in and going through. Uh, so here we go. We'll get this one here started in the middle. as far as we want to go with that. This is the first one, by the way, so I'm hoping that it secures it down and doesn't let it wiggle. Um, but we'll find out. Okay. Get it started, and again, you want this to just barely. It's good to have a power drill rather than an impact driver with these and set it to something that's going to click like that. We'll, we don't even need to snug that down. All right. And of course we go up to the top and pray to God that we didn't poke through and we didn't. We're good. All right. Nine more of those to do. So measure twice, cut once. Uh, I had a hunch that my two by fours under were in the way. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's my finger right there, and I'm about a quarter inch from the edge of the 2x4. This one right here, that 2x4 is right there on it. So I've got to move these over, retrace some lines before I jig these out. But mm, rule here, measure twice, cut once. Same with over here. It's about an inch over, about an inch in that it needed to be. So something that I've decided to do very quickly is uh, <clears throat> just use some polycrylic. I've got one layer on the area that I cut outside. There was a bunch of notes online that said if you've got exposed wood, and then this was on the packaging well as well, that you'd want to go ahead and do some kind of finish on this. And also, I don't know if the camera can show it very well. This here is, there's like a little line from the uh, jigsaw. It must have had like a, a big piece of wood or something in it. So it kind of left a little bit of a line. And I think doing a layer or two of this polyacrylic on top of this, one will waterproof it, because I guess this is still porous wood, or it can, uh, what's his name? Uh, just kind of 
make the finish look a little bit more even on it. So that's kind of the idea behind it. But real quick, I'm putting one layer of polycrylic on this part and then we're gonna cover it. Obviously, don't leave the garage doors open and stuff to allow dust to come in. Uh, get the cat outside or whatever so they don't hop up on it and clean it really well before you put that finish down. But I believe it's supposed to be two hours for a recoat and then 24 hours basically before you really start handling it. Get two hours for recoat to where it's not tacky anymore and then like 24 hours before you're really picking it up and handling it. So this is a long process. Do it in the morning before you leave work is a short answer. Okay, so we are using the Minwax Polycrylic. Uh, this here on the back does say two hours. Little older, cleans up easy with soda and can be recoated in two hours. So we're gonna do two coats at least on this. We'll see how it looks when it's done. Um, I'll show a quick example of how it looks on my kitchen countertop, which we use this with. Um, the only thing I will say, it does kind of, it's kind of tough to get it a good even coat. It's kind of watery, but just very time consuming. So here's a little time lapse of me doing it. Okay, so we're putting some just face boards on here so that we can nail this trim board flush to it because I am going to go with a horizontal look. Hello. Be sure it's lined up with the outside or really close. So I'm whitewashing uh, the top trim board around there to kind of break up the um, countertop and the cedar boards. I've got a different piece of rough cut cedar and it's doing just a really good job of absorbing this light layer of latex that I'm putting on. Um, that one's looking better than this one. I hadn't spread this one out enough, but the, the secret to whitewashing is just a really thin layer. I mean, you want to be kind of fighting to kind of get it on there. See how it's not getting on the top there, but we're getting it after a couple of swipes. That's the secret to right whitewashing white washing we don't want it to be in there now there's geese flying over me and everything but we don't want it to be a thick thick layer i mean we want to spread this thin over this whole area and i mean the, both boards i had it filled up to like there and i'm gonna have left over so just not a lot of pain to get it going but yeah just really thin layer and it'll dry out pretty quickly and you'll actually be ready to trim it up and put it up there pretty quick do want to get all the white on it but yeah these here usually end up turning out really really good and it did look a little darker or deeper white when I was done with it and it's actually absorbed it more now so this is going to get a little bit lighter but it, that, that's the beauty of whitewashing is it's not a perfect it's not a perfect system so you know if you've got a line or something like that somewhere nobody's going to care 
All right, good luck. Okay, so you can see what we've done here. We've got these like five and a half inch uh, whitewash boards kind of in the middle between the countertop and this rough cut sear that we're just brad nailing up to there. Uh, just to kind of break it up, uh, made a jig. I like the look of all of them looking about the same length, so I pick boards from Rough Cut, which hence the name Rough Cut. I pick boards that are about the same length or uh, width and do that. So I'll have to do kind of the same on the other side. And with Rough Cut boards, it's kind of hard to do that. But uh, we're going to put one long board across that, have it uh, basically blocking off that, and then we're going to build a shelf on the bottom out of more cedar boards. But to do this, we just did a jig at 21 or 23 and something inches, whatever it fits to, and uh, cut all of them basically to almost exactly the same length and flushed it on this side. There might be some stuff in the back there that's a little bit off, but I mean, it's close enough. So, and plus, I mean, the only time you're gonna be looking at it is when you're sitting on the toilet staring back. I don't know how many people turn around on the toilet, so. Uh, you know, a, a, an eighth of an inch or even, I mean, a sixteenth is fine, so. Alright, this is our front board. Um, with, this, with this rough cut, you select the spots that you don't want showing, as if we, you know, when we, we turn this outside, it's nowhere, got nowhere near the red, purplish color that we're looking for. So, you gotta pay attention to that stuff. And of course, you know, when you're doing finished stuff, it does have to be very close. So line up your saw blade properly. Yeah, line up your saw blade properly because you don't want to be uh, eighth of an inch long or worse, eighth of an inch short on a big long board, especially. Uh, we'll walk over here and you'll see where we're putting this one. So this one here is going to butt up right on the bottom there. We'll put it level with that 2x4 and basically it's just replacing that 2x4 for the facade. Uh, two, select what side looks best with the top because you'll have your board sitting on top of it. But two, also with rough cut, you get some nice uh, wobbly lines. So I've got about a sixteenth of an inch high here. So you just kind of have to adjust accordingly. And, and measure this can be a spot where you definitely need a helper, but you don't have one, so you just do it. Uh, let's see here. And again, I'm just lining it up with the top here, realizing that there's going to be some little bit of bows all the way on that end. It's bowed down. So I would rather raise it up and have my boards that I'm going to use as my shelf sitting a little weird. Yeah. All right, when brad nailing, especially with these heavier boards, I like to angle my nails, and those two are just there to get it stashed in or set in, and then we just start setting a bunch of them. But again, angle your nails for better hold and avoid knots. Some people call this a finish nailer. And you can bend the wood just a little bit. I wouldn't make a habit of it. This was kind of the stopping point of yesterday and I've been brainstorming a little bit. Um, I wanted to do drawers like in the middle and then I found out that basically like I have about 20 inches in the middle to make drawers and then it would cause a problem of having to do like cabinet doors here next to, do to drawers which I don't know if you've ever seen that. It just doesn't look quite right unless you're doing a bunch of trim pieces and stuff. So I think I'm just gonna block this off with just solid wood here 
and then have two cabinet doors here. And then of course you can reach in and you can put like stuff in here that you wouldn't use a whole lot, but would still need storage space. Uh, my initial plan was to leave it more open, but then the plumbing pipes that would be under it would cause some problems. So we're basically going to, uh, and these are measured to kind of match up with the edges of the sink on the top. We're gonna screw those in right about there. And that'll be our boards to screw into the, uh, screw the other trim boards like this into. And then we'll have to come up with an idea of how to make a, um, a cabinet door and stuff, but that'll be easy. We got a bunch of rough cut. We'll figure it out. Okay, so we ended up needing some boards to basically like face up uh, and flush these boards here. And we just cut a bunch of 20 and a half inch or something like that, three boards that would fit right up in there um, to get it to the same level as these boards on the front. So pretty simple there. So I got maybe an even better idea. Uh, these are six inches piece, six inch pieces of rough cut cedar. You can see there's about an inch extra there. Uh, same with the one over there. But wouldn't it be cool if all of my three inch boards were matching? Like the grain was matching together. So my wacky idea is to nail up these three inch boards, just kind of mock them up. And then while they are up, I will nail in the support pieces that are supposed to help keep them together as cabinet doors or these pieces really don't need it as much that's more for aesthetics but the ones for the cabinet doors will shoot in the nails to hold it together yeah so we've selected our five boards that are going to make up the front of the cabinet over there uh, this one here got deselected because right at about 58 inches where we're going to be cutting it's got some rot there this one here did not get selected it's faded and then it's just really white like why would i put something that pale <laughs> on it but roughly 58 inches ends right there about at my foot so that not having color doesn't matter over that way is looking pretty good we've got this sun mark on this one when we measured this out 20 and a half inches i have to rip like a half inch or or so because this well i might even need to rip more than a half inch because this is like 18 and a half inches so we're gonna have to rip a couple boards unless we want them to kind of look like there's only one two and a half inch one which i don't think we do so we'll have to get the table saw out and rip these but we're, in the meantime we're going to cut them at a right about 58 inches there and get all the junk we're going to square up the ends cut them at 58 inches you know avoid bows like that so when you're dealing with this rough cut lumber um, sometimes you got to get a little creative and you got to do a little bit more thinking than some of this other stuff but gosh does it look good and does it pay off to start.
right, there we go. We could squeeze them together just a little bit, but some of that will come out when we um, rip them. But that's the rough thing. I believe we'll measure again here. But it was 18 and a half roughly, and that is 20 and 20 and a half there. So we're gonna have to trim some of, the, some of that stuff off uh, down. All right, now that I have some form of safety glasses, this is the one that is three and a half inches over here and like three inches on the other end. So I'm basically using the square side just to square it up and it needs to be shaved down anyway. So we are going to do that. It's gonna take a little bit of concentrating. it fitting but this is where you get like a screw or a nail I might even get a nail and we're gonna gap all of these and make it fit so I cut them uh, this gap over here was 18 or sorry 19 this was like 18 and 3 quarter because this bottom board here is bowed a little bit this was like 18 and just shy of over a half 18 and three quarter, 18 and three quarter. So we're gonna gap these with little nails and I cut the, the width of all five of those boards to like 18 and a half. So we'll just gap them, whether we use the little brad nails or whatever, we'll gap them to fit and we're just going to, this is the plan, I haven't really tested this out ever before. We're gonna just nail them onto these boards right now just with the brad nailers and uh, see if we can get the doors mocked up on the front before this and then you know make a cut okay so another thing to think about is it does need to be level now with a curved board under it can be a problem this was our highest point here and i'm gonna have to lift i don't know it's about a quarter of an inch gap there i think i'm gonna continue to level it as we go up yeah And when doing this, put them in the same, you know, direction so that it's easy to pull out because we probably will be pulling these out afterwards. Uh, I just got gout pieces of galvanized wire that are all the same length or width, diameter, whatever you'd like to call it. And I used those. So. And again, this is just kind of a mock-up. I don't like putting too many nails into stuff, but it is what it is. Well, by golly, that's pretty dang level right there on its own. Jeez.
work too bad. Okay, set that down right there. That's staying together like I wanted it to. Okay, so these ones are already nailed in and I'm gonna line this one up on the edge. Same thing. Safety glasses. Come on, balance for me, you bastard. Okay, so we're going to put the two other boards on that one. That's complete and goes in the middle, but I'm not gonna set it until I've got those done so that I can uh, just make sure that it fits. Uh, so the two little boards there will be about 18 inches or so. Okay, so this part was tougher than I would have liked it to be. Um, <laughs> these doors getting the hinges on I don't know if somebody's got a secret. I, I tend to say that a lot. Uh, but this is definitely easier if there was two people there and you were able to hold this door up. Because the goal, we didn't want this to go too far over and block this one. And then also, we did not want it to go too far over and block this one. Um, so again, we're roughing them in. We're not truly measuring them. This is not finite cut lumber. but. I was able to get it. I did put some deeper screws than what was given in the kit for these little hinges. Um, they're just basic, I guess, magnetic cabinet hinges. And then you can see here, this is our stop, is just our piece of board right there that just stops it where it needs to be. Uh, I kind of initially wanted these to be set in, if you know what I mean where they were not sticking out one extra board, they just kept rubbing on each other. And I did not want to have to sand down another eighth of an inch on each side. So we just went ahead and protruded them out a little bit. Uh, it had to work that way with the hinges as well, but it turned out, I'm very happy with the way it looks. I'd like to get a little bit farther out on that one just to line it up properly, but otherwise it's looking really good. And we got to finish out the floor part of it, and then of course set the sinks and all of that stuff before we bring it inside. And of course I won't be lifting this by myself, I'm gonna wait for friends to come over and help me move it, but it's pretty much there. Pretty happy with it. So I actually did a mock-up with the sinks here. Uh, I think it looks great. I love the look of it, but what we're doing for the uh, so-called shelving, I, if I could do it over again, I would have started over here and moved that way because I'm going to have to cut a little thin board to fit that spot. But we're just cutting the rest of this cedar board and just steepling it into there. And then if you go around, We'll use the less colorful boards in the middle here because this is stationary. And as you can see, I've started one over here and we'll fill in the rest of that. But other than that, it'll be done. And then you can look up a video of plumbing a sink because that will be that. But we'll put a little video of how it looks at the end, but that'll be after we install it and everything like that. So here you go. All right, so excuse the mess a little bit, but uh, we've had this installed for, oh, a couple weeks, like two weeks or so. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. There, I think, is a pretty good pan view of it. But yeah, uh, remember at the beginning of the video, let's see if this can catch it. Uh, I talked about that. Of course, it's not very lit up. Let's see if that'll help it over there. I talked about the pipe being in the way. We ended up having to notch that pipe out uh, uh, over there, so uh, pay attention to where your pipes are. We did end up being able to run a uh, 
extra just two foot of pipe and it's been working great uh bought these sinks on amazon and one of them's already leaking there so buyer beware on saving a dollar or something but yeah it's worked out really great i love how it looks um some of y'all may have noticed in the video that this little gap right here was showing just filled that with some caulking and it went really well but yeah looks pretty good in my opinion looks great